Philip Petit does not fear death. It is 1974 and he's in love with the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. He wants to hang a wire between the towers and walk across it. His story begins in Paris, where he works as a street performer. He forms a circle, which is a sacred space, and will not allow the audience to stray within it. However, he's performing illegally, without a permit, and is often chased away by the police. While he travels, he's always on the lookout for the perfect place to hang his wire. A girl gives him a candy as payment, and he tosses it into the air and catches it in his mouth. He grimaces in pain. Philippi goes to the dentist and asks for an immediate appointment. He is forced to fill out some forms and wait, but as he's sitting there, he reads a magazine with an article advertising the unfinished Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York City. When finished, they will be the tallest structures in the world. He tears the pages from the magazine and draws a pencil stroke between the towers. His dream is born. Philippi first went to the circus as a child and watched the white devils, some high wire walkers, perform. At home, he would practice on ropes strung between two trees, much to his father's disapproval. Philippi believes that he has a talent, but he still wants to learn more. One stormy night, he breaks into the circus tent and attempts to walk the wire. Suddenly, the lights come on and he is caught by Papa Rudy, who calls him an imbecile and demands that he gets down immediately. Rudy is patriarch of the White Devils. Philippi joins down and is chased by Rudy, but then Philippi picks up some bats and starts to juggle, impressing Rudy. Rudy tries to train him to respect the audience or he will never work in the circus. Philippi claims that he is an artist and doesn't wish to work in a ridiculous circus. Rudy throws him out and a short time later, he's also thrown out of his home by his father as his mother weeps. He sets off to pursue his dream but doesn't know what he's looking for. However, he figures that he may find it in Paris. He notices a girl named Annie who's playing her guitar to a small audience and so he sets up his own performance circle, quickly stealing Annie's audience. She later confronts him about his actions, but as she storms off, it starts to rain. He steals an umbrella and they shelter from the rain. He makes a deal about the performance space and they go for a drink together. He explains his dreams to her and she tells him that he should follow them. They kiss and Philippi explains that she has become his first accomplice. Annie arranges for a wire to be hung between two trees at her art school. One day, Philippi is approached by a guy named Jean-Louis who is a photographer. Philippi calls him his second accomplice, his official photographer. When Philippi's wire collapses, he goes back to see Rudy to learn how to tie the wire correctly. He has to pay Rudy for every tip he's given. He travels with the troupe for some time, but never performs, although he practices whenever the wire is free. His first public performance is over a fishing lake, but during the walk, he loses concentration due to the drunk fisherman beneath him and he falls. Despite this failure, he decides to walk between the towers of Notre Dame. He sets up the wire overnight and walks as the first tourists arrive in the morning. It is a success, but Philippi is arrested. He is celebrated in all the international newspapers, but the French call him a vandal. In a French newspaper, he sees an article about the Twin Towers and takes it as a sign to continue. He travels to New York with his accomplice and they marvel at the towers. However, Philippi suddenly balks at the scale and thinks that it would be impossible to hang the wire. He sneaks inside and makes his way to the top. He overlooks the city and walks out onto a suspended metal beam and looks down. He whispers that it's impossible, but he'll do it anyway. Later, Jean-Louis tries to convince Philippi that this is madness, but agrees to figure out how to get the wire across. Rudy tries to convince him to wear a safety harness, but Philippi refuses and they argue. Annie insists that he go to apologize. Rudy says that his sons are all experienced wire walkers and he would never allow them to walk at great height without a safety wire. Rudy doesn't understand what Philippi is doing, but he knows that it is something he has to do. He returns Philippi all the money that he paid him so that he can pursue his dream. He also gives him his grandfather's tape measure. Jean-Louis introduces his good friend Jeff, who wishes to be a third accomplice. He can only speak English numbers and is a teacher. He is also scared of heights. Jean-Louis has figured out how to get the wire to the other tower by using a bow and arrow. Philippi selects the 6th of August as the date of the stunt. 
They will look for some American accomplices in the meantime. They return to New York, and Philippi employs various disguises to learn as much about the towers as possible. His greatest disguise was an architect, which gave him unparalleled access, but he accidentally steps on a nail that impales his foot. Annie treats the injury, but he will not seek professional treatment. He continues his spy work on crutches. Philippi is recognized by a man named Barry, who saw him walk at Notre Dame. He works in the towers and joins him as another accomplice. The next accomplice is JP, who Philippi meets when he goes to buy a walkie-talkie. He then introduces him to his friend Albert and David, who become the final two accomplices. As the big day approaches, Philippi is starting to get agitated. He explains a plan to the assembled accomplices. As he walks away, the others start to doubt his sanity, but Annie and Jeff support him. That night, Philippi cannot sleep, so goes to now shut the coffin, the crate that contains the wires. He wakes Annie, and she's upset that he gives it that name. She tells him to come to bed, but he worries that when it comes to it, he may not be able to take that first step. She assures him that he'll be fine. On the 6th of August, the plan begins. The wires are taken to the North Tower, the plan being for Barry to hide them in his office until nighttime. They are not allowed up, as someone has rented all the elevators for a few days. But JP manages to charm the foreman, and the equipment is delivered straight to the top floor. After some time, David leaves as he's stoned and thinks that the police are coming for them. That just leaves Philippi and Jeff alone. They prepare to set up, but have to hide from a guard in a lift shaft. Jeff notices that Philippi's foot is bleeding, but Philippi shrugs it off. Eventually, the guard leaves, and the two men make their way to the roof. They are able to see Jean-Louis and Albert on the roof of the other tower, who shoot across an arrow with fishing wire attached. They run to collect their equipment and bring it to the roof to continue the setup. Annie is watching from the ground. Suddenly, the guard approaches and they have to hide, but he's called away for pizza and leaves without noticing them. They continue the setup, but have a problem when the cable falls. They manage to get it back, but as morning approaches, Albert leaves as he doesn't think that Philippi will succeed. Additionally, he plans to sell his own pictures of their endeavor. Annie notices that the cable is being tightened and she and JP are thrilled. The wiring is almost complete when a strange man suddenly appears on the roof. He looks at the wires and then nods at Philippi before leaving as mysteriously as he appeared. Now the wiring is complete and Philippi goes to put on his costume. He drops his shirt and Annie panics that he's falling. Philippi is furious, but chooses to do the walk, wearing his undershirt. Philippi takes his balancing pole and starts to make his walk between the towers. Annie, JP, and Barry are watching beneath and attract the attention of other people to watch the stunt. Philippi completes his walk to the rapturous applause from below. Although he has completed the walk, he looks back towards the other tower and decides to walk back. Halfway across, he feels thankful, and so, gets down on one knee and salutes the wire, the towers, and then the great city of New York. Suddenly, two cops arrive at the tower and Jeff is arrested. They call Philippi back, but instead, he turns and walks back towards the other tower. He is aware of the audience below and decides to look down. He finds it peaceful, calm, and serene. Philippi continues his walk, but cops also appear on the other side as well. Eventually, he just lays down on the wire and looks up to the sky. Suddenly, a bird appears overhead and he feels a silent threat, so he decides to finish his stunt. He walks calmly back to the first tower and calmly surrenders. A man tries to cut the wires, but Philippi protests as the tension in the wire could cause it to hurt somebody. The cops agree, and so he reveals the location of the handle and the wire is removed safely. As Philippi is taken down through the tower, he is applauded by the construction workers. He's arrested, but the police are also astounded by his achievement. Jeff reveals that he has Rudy's grandfather's tape measure in his pocket. News crews arrive and question Philippi as to why he was doing something so dangerous. Later, a judge sentenced him to walk a wire in Central Park to entertain the children. The stunt was reported worldwide, and when Papa Rudy heard about it, he was thrilled. Philippi and his crew of accomplices celebrate the success and he thanks them for their help. We learn that Philippi remained in New York as his friends returned home. Annie also returned with them in order to follow her own dreams. They hug as they say their goodbyes. 
Philippi was given a pass to go to the observation deck on the towers any time he wanted, although with the condition that he would not perform his stunt again. He notes with a sad look on his face that the passes normally have an expiration date, but his has been crossed through and marked forever. We then see the World Trade Center Twin Towers, which are, of course, no more. If you want to watch more on Movie Shortens, click on our next videos and playlists on the screen. Thanks for watching.